Having cats and an Australian Shepherd puppy under the same roof can be an absolute nightmare. You don't want your dog crushing your cats and you don't want your cats scratching your dog's eyes out. Trust me, I know, I own three cats that cover the entire personality spectrum. Now I will warn you, your cats may never like your dog and your dog may never like your cats. But what's most important is that they're neutral around each other. So let's go over some important points in order to avoid World War III. You don't wanna just plop your dog and cat in a room and see what happens. Things can go wrong fast and create a bad impression on both sides. Remember, your dog's a puppy and everything's a game to them. They don't know any better. Their energy is much higher than cats and that's something that a cat can sense. Slow and steady wins the race. So make sure they're in separate rooms or if you have two floors, dedicate one floor for the puppy and the other floor for the cats. Even to this day, Winston is seven months old and I'm still using the baby gate daily. When I'm in the living room and I'm just watching TV, I put the baby gate up to separate the rest of the house from the living room. So if the cats feel overwhelmed, they can just run away. If your cat uses a pillow or a blanket that they use often, give it to your dog and vice versa. This way they'll get used to each other's smell. So when they do officially meet, they will sense something familiar towards one another. So when is the right time to introduce your puppy and your cats? Honestly, that's up to you guys and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. You know the personality of your cat, you know their temperament, you know what they can withstand, so use your best judgment. But before even doing this, you need to make sure that your cat has a safe place to run to. Either a cat tree, on a couch, on a table, somewhere where the dog can't get to them. And this is really important. Cats are curious by nature. They'll eventually warm up and observe your dog. Just stay patient. As your puppy gets older, they might exhibit resource guarding behaviors towards your cats. Obviously, no owner wants to see this, but this is something real and it needs to be recognized. And to be honest, I get it. The dog's food is their food. Their bed and their crate is their bed. This is what makes them feel safe. So why would they want to share that? Don't panic if this happens, it's normal and it can fade out over time, but don't expect it to. At the moment, Winston is resource guarding towards the cats. So how do I deal with this? It's very simple. When I'm feeding Winston, I don't let the cats near him. I don't let the cats near his bed and I don't let the cats near his crate. One thing to remember is that these dogs are herding dogs. They chase other animals, it's built into them. So when you see your dog observing your cat, that's totally fine, that's actually great. But when they start pursuing and fixated on your cat, that's when you need to step in. It's okay if they're interested and kind of walk up to your cat, but don't let them get fixated on them. If you continue to put in the work to your dog and your cat, they'll become more and more neutral towards each other. To give you an example, Jules has no problem walking by Winston, approaching him, sleeping in the same room as him, or even sitting next to him. The only time I do intervene between the two is that if I see Winston pursuing and being fixated on her. Winston, come here. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Gus, and Gus wants nothing to do with Winston. He is neutral, but he's also cautious around him. So what do I mean by this? Well, Gus will sleep in the same room as Winston, that's fine, but if Winston approaches Gus, he'll smack him, he'll hiss him, and it's not just a little tap. So I don't allow Winston to go near Gus. So how do you avoid this fixation and this pursuing behavior? That's another very easy answer. That is, you need to exercise your dog daily. And I mean physically and mentally. It depends on their age. When they're a bit older, like Winston's age, you need an hour and a half to even four hours of exercise a day. You want them to think when they're looking at a cat, they're just like, hmm. You want that neutrality. You want him to be so exhausted that he just couldn't be bothered to chase your cat. This is the single best advice I can give you. Get your dog tired to the point where he doesn't even want to get up. He's already going to be sleeping for most of the day. So when he is up, he's going to be full of energy and ready to go. So it is possible to live with an Aussie and cats. You just have to put in the work. Let me know how your guys' journey is going. Please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you guys next time.